So we're about to begin book 11 of the 13 books of Augustine's Confession. And this is an opportunity to share a different part of Augustine's journey. It hopefully allow us to consider our own journey as we return to our loving creator, as we seek what the concept of home in our lives and for our world. Uh, Augustine has considered memory in book, book 10 and went into a great tale. That's the hinge book. And now books 11, 12, and 13 are centered on the three persons of the, of the Trinity. So this book, book 11, uh, presents us through a study of scripture, as understanding of God the Father. And then book 12, we'll take a look at Christ, Son of God, and the last final book of the Confessions of St. Augustine, book 13, will contemplate the Holy Spirit. So some readers, without a doubt, who pick up the Confessions throughout these 16 centuries, and there have been many, and very influential people as well as very ordinary people, but who have found in, in these Confessions something that they can identify with, knowing that all is gift, all is grace, and that all we have and are that is good belongs to God and the challenge to be good stewards of, of those good gifts. But as I say, many of those who have taken up the book of the Confessions have tend to drop it long before, but certainly by the time they get to what could be the end of the autobiographical part, you know, chapter uh, books one through nine. Book 10, those who get that far realize, oh, this is a different book. This is for a different purpose. And it's true. Those who are able to move on and uh, understand the reason for these final three books will be surprised and pleasantly hope you and I as well to understand uh, that the true reason that Augustine wanted to write was to get this real, his real goal, was the study of scripture. He has held back all this time. He has interested others, told him God's uh, revelation in his own life, God reaching out to him in his own process of conversion. But now we get to the heart of the matter, which is for Augustine, all is in praise of God, confession of God, testimony to God. Any confession he makes needs to be ordered in time, and so he, he uses the title Time and Eternity. But Augustine reminds us of the common ground between philosophical, religious, and autographical material in this book. And that, as I say, is to be able to praise and give testimony and witness to God, recognize God's power, God's presence in his life. So scripture as the, the reason for having come this far, and hopefully we'll be able to find ourselves uh, the, a meaning in scripture. Augustine didn't when he was young. Even when he was in the, in the process of conversion, listening to Bishop Ambrose, it, it was not all that it was meant to be or would be later on. But as he begins this book 11, he says, when I am relate, relating all this to you at such length, why am I doing it? To confess to you our miseries and the mercies you, God, have shown us in your will to set us free completely. So the will of God to set us free completely is what he wants to give witness to, testimony to, as you have begun to do already. And by so confessing to you, we lay bare our loving devotion. Augustine, very sincere, his spontaneously and from his heart, as he dictates and the scribes write down, he says, how long a tale I have told you as best I could and as truly wanted to, because you first will that I should confess to you, my Lord and God, for you are good and your mercy endures forever. He says that in the very first chapter of this book, 11. My pen also serves as my tongue. I have long desired, burned with desire, 
to meditate on your law. He uses the word law for scripture. He's saying, finally, I've gotten to the point where I can meditate and discourse and, and reflect on scripture. I am chary of frittering away on anything else the hours I find free from such needful activities as bodily nourishment, mental concentration, and the duties I owe to the people and others who I do not owe but render nonetheless. So he does not want to have to take time away from what is this, what he has longed for. And then he begins chapter 3 of book 11 with this beautiful prayer. He says, O oh Lord my God, hear my prayer. May your mercy hearken to my longing, a longing on fire, again fire, on fire not for myself alone, but to serve the brethren I dearly love. This is why he wants to de go delve into scriptures, to explore the depths of scripture, not only for myself, but for the brethren I dearly love. You see my heart, and you know this is true. Let me offer and sacrifice to you the service of my heart and tongue, but grant me first what I can offer you, for I am needy and poor. He recognizes that. He does not have enough formation. He does not understand the, the significance, the depth of Scripture. He says, but you are rich unto all who call upon you. You care for us, though no care troubles you. Circumcise all that is within me from, my, from presumption, and my lips without from falsehood. And here is the heart. Let your scriptures be my chaste delight. So all that has happened before, the first nine books, and then ten, the hinge to arrive us here, let this, let your scripture be my chaste delight. This is Augustine's hope, this is Augustine's prayer, and this is Augustine's desire. So he's going to contemplate God the Father in this book 11. God the Father understood as, as the creator. God the creator. It says, See, Father, in chapter 4, have regard to me and see and bless my longing. Let it be pleasing in your merciful eyes that I find grace before you so that the inner meeting of your words may be open to me as I knock at their door. I beg this grace through our Lord Jesus Christ. Let me listen. Let me listen so that I may understand how you made heaven and earth in the beginning. And so there are the words, the very first words of the very first book of our scripture, the Bible, in the beginning, in the beginning. So he, Augustine treats in this book the opening of Genesis. And in three separate books, 11, 12, and 13, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. In the beginning you made the heaven and earth. Who can understand this, Augustine says in chapter 11? Who can explain it? I begin to shudder, yet catch fire with longing. I shudder in so much as I am unlike my Creator. I am afire with longing for Him, because some likeness there is. So this is Augustine as he begins to take up this long for task of delving into understanding scripture right from the very beginning, the first verses of the first book in the beginning. But he remembers we are already saved, but in hope and in patience, we look forward to the fulfillment of your promise. So he's not studying scripture in order to be saved. He realizes and states very clearly our belief as Christians, followers of Christ, and certainly in the footsteps of Augustine, that we are already saved. Our task is to give gratitude to God, praise to God, for what God has been able to do in us, with us, and through us in the work of recreating, of creating a new and a better world in spite of our own limited selfishness and self-centeredness, to be able to open our mind and our heart to God's divine plan and collaborate with God in building up this a new world, a new heaven and a new earth for all people here, not just for those who recognize God in our lives, but for everybody. He says that as he finishes this uh, 
book, in the almost final chapter, chapter 39, says, Because your mercy is better than many a life, I confess that my life is no more than anxious distraction. But in my Lord, the Son of Man, your right hand upholds me. He stands as mediator between you, the one God, and us, the many, who are pulled many ways by multifarious distractions. So that's where he brings us after all this time, how he's relying on, on God through Christ to help him understand and help us understand through his exploration the meaning of scriptures. Now as my years waste away amid groaning, you are my solace, Lord because you are my Father. You are eternal. So I encourage you to take up this Book 11, grasp it. It's long and it is difficult. It's philosophical. But it's a revelation of his relationship and his desire to discover God the Father in his life and get the significance of Scripture of creation worked by God the Father, the Creator. Now, he's not explaining how, he's explaining why, why creation. It's all out of love. It's all out of mercy. It's all part of God's divine plan. So I encourage you to take that up. I encourage you to take up scripture and talk to others about you, what you discover there. Ask others what they discover there. This is a journey which we share with others. It becomes a much lighter journey, much more significant, much more valuable journey to the extent that we share this with others, our, our understanding of God, our understanding of ourselves, our appreciation for all of creation, and our appreciation for others.